Sigma Tiger News, all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Houston, we have a problem. It's a space rapist, white Kool-Aid, gang parents, and the worst son ever. <laughs> Welcome to Sigma Tiger News, and guess what? We breached 100, so if you were the 100th subscriber, congratulations. We have 101 at the moment, and today's the day I get off probation. And my community strike is being removed at some point today, and uh, we'll try not to get another one because we know we're not allowed to talk about certain things. But we're definitely going to talk about this because Houston, we definitely have a huge problem. Believed to be a serial rapist, NASA employee charged with six sexual assaults. Officials seek potential victims. Here's an image of the individual of Asian descent, it looks. Uh, a NASA employee has been charged with six different sexual assaults and authorities believe there may be more victims out there. Eric Sim, 37, is out of jail on a $700,000 bond. His bond conditions are very strict, according to officials. He is on 24-hour house arrest and his electronic devices are being monitored. His predatory behavior with the victims in these cases, along with his NASA credentials, frequently mentioned to gain credibility with his victims in his international travel. All are clues that could indicate further victims who are out there, says Harris County District Attorney Kim Ogg. Officials say the six cases for which Sim is charged for occurred during a time frame from 2019 to 2022. The alleged assaults happened at Sim's townhouse east of downtown Houston, one of them possibly while intoxicated. Authorities say Sim used dating apps to communicate with multiple people at the time, at the same time, sorry. Uh, he portrayed himself as someone who wanted a committed relationship before he ultimately sexually assaulted the victims. The apps Sim used include Hinge, East Meets East, and OkCupid. According to court documents, the women allege after a couple of dates, Sim pinned them down and violently forcibly assaulted them without their consent. Because Sim frequently traveled, authorities believe there may be more victims out there locally, nationally, and internationally. Investigators say Sim's travel stretched to Japan, Canada, the UK, and beyond. The nature of these offenses is so personal and so predatory that we felt it was important that we tell the public and ask the public to take a look, a long, hard look at Mr. Sim, and let us know if you not just have been in contact, you may have been victimized by him, Hogg said. NASA security team cooperated with local law enforcement and blah, blah, blah. We have nothing to do with it. Uh, Sim is also known for being a star in a viral 2012 NASA Gangnam-style parody video, KP... RC2 reached out to Sim's defense attorney, and he provided this response. Eric Sim has pleaded not guilty. He had consensual relations with women he met online and dating sites, and unfortunately a few of them have made false allegations. The relationships didn't turn out the way the complainants had hoped for, and we look forward to presenting the whole truth to a jury. And let's just go ahead and have another look at Mr. Sim. And if you've seen this guy around, then uh, go ahead and get scared. So what's next? What do we got? Democrats reject amendment to require informing people if they're eating bugs. Okay, so typically you have an ingredient list, right? So what are they going to put on it? Uh, chitlin, usually. Well, what is that? That's like the outer shell of uh, the grasshopper or insect uh, of choice, but uh, shrimp also have them as well. People are allergic to it, and that was one of the big controversies about putting bugs into food is what about people who have shellfish allergies? Senator Tory Westrom put forward an amendment that would require food to be labeled if it contains either insect products or lab-grown meat. Sounds like a great idea. Democrats in the Minnesota Senate voted down an amendment that would have required foods containing bugs or cell-cultured products to be labeled as such. On April 4th, the Omnibus Agricultural Policy Bill, also known as SF4225, was discussed, amended, and passed by the Minnesota Senate. According to the bill's author, Senator Eric Putnam, Democratic from St. Cloud, the overwhelming majority of the bill related to policy recommendations from the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Before the bill was passed, Senator Tory Westrom, a uh, Republic, Republican from Alexandria, put forward an amendment that would require food to be properly labeled if it contains either insect products or artificial cell culture food, such as lab-grown meat. 
Speaking to his amendment, Westrom said, This just sets forth that if there's bugs in your food for protein, cricket flour, whatever it is, it needs to be labeled. The consumers need to know. If your meat is cell cultured and grown in a petri dish, you also need to know. Consumers should have that knowledge as they shop in the stores. <clears throat> just like a fresh Atlantic salmon. Guess what? That's farmed. It's not fresh. It's only uh, wild caught if it's labeled as such. Otherwise, it's grown in a pen in a farm, and they inject your salmon with pink dye and antibiotics to make it resemble what it should look like. While Putnam agreed that consumers should know what they are consuming, the St. Cloud legislator opposed Westrom's amendment. In opposing the amendment, Putnam described the issue as a future problem and said legislators need to know what fiscal impact the labeling requirement will have before approving it. So it sounds like a whole bunch of lobby lobbyists have got involved and uh, told the politicians to uh, vote this down because uh, we want to make sure that our product gets out there. Everybody wants to have consumer awareness of the food that they eat, but some of us want to do it in a thoughtful way. One thing that can come from the discussion is that currently there is only one space in the entire country that is selling cell-cultivated meat, and that was a restaurant in San Francisco that has already stopped doing it, Putnam said. Okay, so in, instead of getting in front of it, they're just going to say, it's not a problem, uh, it might become one in the future and we'll deal with it then. Fair enough, we'll see. Let's tell people what's in their food that some people don't even consider to be food. Just because there's no money in the bill doesn't mean we can't establish a policy. My main concern was that the lab-grown meat or cell-grown meat I heard in testimony from three different companies that are producing lab-grown meat, so I think it's going to be here sooner than some think. Absolutely. This guy is forthright. Uh, Romeo and Juliet play starring Tom Holland, Francesca Amawuda Rivers faces racial abuse. Yeah, so uh, if you're alive and on the internet, you've probably seen an image of the new Juliet, and uh, apparently they're receiving a bunch of racial abuse, uh, which is unfounded, of course. Like, who cares what color she is? She could be Asian, she could be black, she could be white. I mean, it was written in England so uh, by Shakespeare, so all of the characters were white at the time. And now it's all about diversification, and that's fine. If you can act and put on a good show, that's great. And if everyone enjoys it, that's awesome. So some people are being jerks and saying that uh, because she's black, it's a problem. Uh, Juliet was blah, blah, blah. The truth is, and I think most people uh, just think she's plain ugly. Like, and that's a lot of the comments that I was seeing on Twitter was that, like, who would fall in love with a person like that? And that's cruel, but it's observational, and it's opinionated, and it's uh, personal. So, like, it, it, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I think a lot of people were just wondering how um, anyone would fall in love with someone so ugly. And I personally, like, beauty is typically based off symmetry. Right? Like, you know what I mean? If your left side matches your right side, the positioning of your eyes, your nose compared to your lips, and how it all lines up. It's like if you look at a building that's all misshapen and weird, you'll be like, ah, oh, your brain's kind of like, I don't like that. But if you look at something that's perfectly symmetrical, round edges and things, you're like, ooh, I like it. Why? Because that's the way our body and brain is designed to be attracted to certain things. So following the announcement of Romeo and Juliet cast, there's been a barrage of deplorable racial abuse online directed towards a member of our company. This must stop. We are working with a remarkable group of artists. We insist that they are free to create work without facing online harassment. We will continue to support and protect everyone in our company at all costs. Any abuse will not be tolerated and will be reported. Bullying and harassment have no place online, in our industry, or in our wider communities. Our rehearsal room is full of joy, compassion, and kindness. We celebrate the extraordinary talent of our incredible collaborators, the Romeo and Juliet company. Community will continue to rehearse with generosity and love and focus on the creation of our production. Yeah. And you have it. There's a bunch of uh, diverse characters in the play. Great. Wonderful. No one cares about that. I think people are just upset that she's ugly. And, the, you know, like, it's hard to relate when you're like, okay, this guy's willing to, like, put it all on the line for this woman who's not attractive to, I guess, the people on the internet at least. Perhaps uh, Tom Holland finds her attractive. I don't know. But anyway, there's an image of the two. Take from it what you wish. But uh, yeah, definitely don't say anything because she's colorful or him because he's colorful or lack thereof. It doesn't matter because you remove the skin, we're all the same within. Get it through your skull, people. It don't matter. All right, moving on. Idaho teen 18 who pledged his support to ISIS is arrested moments before he planned to attack churches with guns, knives, and fire. A plethora of weapons. 
Uh, a teen who pledged to support ISIS was arrested moments before he planned to attack multiple churches in Idaho. Alexander Scott Mercurio, sounds like he's in Romeo and Juliet, 18, was arrested over the weekend by the Justice Department after allegedly planning attacks on local churches in Kaldalin in the name of ISIS. A criminal complaint states that Mercurio planned to carry out the attacks using guns, knives, and fire on Sunday. He now faces charges of attempting to provide material support and resources to ISIS. During a search of his parents' home, police found items consistent with his planned attack, including a metal pipe, handcuffs, folding saw, head coverings, two canisters of butane fuel, and a machete. Here is an image of the individual. And a flag, the ISIS flag. It's another, uh, looks like a mugshot of the individual. Young fellow with a mustache and some acne. Unfortunate turn of events for him. Police also found multiple rifles and handguns in his father's bedroom. Mercurio stated he intended to incapacitate his father with a pipe, handcuff him, and use the firearms locked in the closet to attack the church, court documents said. According to the app, David, the 18-year-old used his school-issued laptop research and plan a terrorist attack. Mercurio allegedly told the informant that once that he once drank the Kool-Aid of white supremacy before finding more purpose in ISIS. Mercurio expressed that there are too many churches to choose from when scouting a location for the attack. I'm going to fix that real soon, he allegedly said. The teen also expressed his desire to carry out an attack, partially for the sake of satiating some kind of bloodlust, according to the affidavit. He planned to donate his money to ISIS after the martyrdom mission. The affidavit said FBI Director Christopher Wray called the attack plan truly horrific. The defendant allegedly pledged loyalty to ISIS and sought to attack people attending churches in Idaho. Truly horrific plan, which was detected and thwarted by the FBI's Joint Terrorism Attack Force. Ray said in his statement released Monday. Well, congratulations, FBI. You've done a great job there and saved some Christians. And lock this fool up. Uh, body cam footage shows Akron police shooting a teen determined to be holding a fake gun. Ooh, not looking good. Let's find out what happened here. Uh, body cam footage released by the city of Akron on Monday shows the April 1st shooting teenager Tavion Conce Williams, who was shot in the hand after a 911 caller reported him to police for holding what was later determined to be a body, uh, sorry, uh, a toy gun. So the video shows the officer arriving on the scene and asking the teen to put his hands behind his back before firing a single shot that injured the teen's hand. As he exited his vehicle, the teen can be seen with his hands up in the air amid the shooting, reportedly screaming, it's fake, it's fake, it's fake, regarding the gun as the officer exits his vehicle. Okay, we'll see what's happening there. He's now grappling with the trauma of being profiled and having his life flash before his eyes after being shot. Tavion was shot on the inside of his wrist, which clearly indicates his hands were up when he was shot. Uh, the officer was identified by the city of Akron Monday as Ryan Westlake, a nine-year veteran of the department who has been uh, placed on paid administrative leave amid the investigation. The officer's file includes a number of disciplinary actions and use of force incidents, one of which has been deemed unreasonable. Additionally, the city anticipates having further information to release in the coming weeks. Uh, we are confident when all the facts are released, our officer's action will be deemed justified. The incident remains under investigation, and due to the independent investigation, we won't be commenting further. Here is an image of the toy gun, which looks very real. Typically, the toy gun will have an orange uh, stopper on the top to indicate that it is a toy, but, I mean, I can understand how you could mistake that for a real weapon. Akron Mayor Shams Malik Shamas Malik Sori said in a statement Monday that the city released the body cam footage in the officer's personnel file in an effort to be as transparent as possible. Thank you. That's great. We will continue to be transparent and communicative as the process unfolds. I was calling because I was walking my dog and there's a guy walking down the street and he was aiming a gun at people's houses. He pulled it out and was acting like he was going to shoot their houses, the caller said in the audio from 911 call. Asked if the male was white or black, the caller said, Black male, shorter dreads, he has a black hoodie on, and it has, like, Adidas or something written on the back, and the gun was, like, a little bit bigger than a pistol. Responding officer approached the subject, matching the caller's description. Callers, I believe that's supposed to say. Uh, at approximately 7.11 p.m., local time, with, uh, what he was talking about, Brighton Road, the officer stopped his marked police car to investigate. As the officer began to exit his patrol car, he quickly issued a verbal command for the male to show his hands. Police said in a statement accompanying the release of the body cam footage, seconds later, the officer discharged his firearm, uh, striking the male in the hand after observing the subject with what appeared to be a gun in his hand. Shot fired, dropped to the ground. The officer said, repeatedly screaming to the officer, the gun is fake. Pounds Williams dropped to the ground. Footage shows. Yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and see exactly what happened here. Let's tune in. Graphic footage for anyone who's scared. Shots fired! Shots fired! It's fake! It's fake! It's fake! 
It's pain. It's pain. Shot start. It's Drop pain. to the ground. Drop to the ground. Drop to the ground. Drop to the ground. Drop to the ground. Definitely doesn't want to get murdered. Don't shoot me again. So there's a little bit of uh, expletives going on here. So you can see he is shot in the wrist there. They proceed to go ahead and handcuff the individual. But uh, what do you think? Put it down in the comments. What do you think? Was this excessive? Uh, did the cop do the right thing? He could have shot him right in the chest, which is typically what they say to do. Because guess what? If you shoot someone in the hand, that bullet is going to go through it and go into someone's house potentially. So when you're in a situation like this, especially as law enforcement or authoritative uh, with a gun, they tell you aim for the body and double tap. Eliminate the target. He saw a gun. This sharpshooter went ahead and shot the gun out of the boy's hand. I don't know. Racial profiling? No. Not at all. The kid was seen with a gun. Didn't The person didn't know what it was, and he's pointing it at houses, just having a laugh. Shouldn't be walking around the streets with a fake gun. How about that? Stupid. And then the cop said, pull your hands out. His hands were up in the air, but he had a gun in it. So the, the cop reacted. Maybe it was inappropriate. Maybe he should have said, drop the gun first. Well, if it was a real gun, this wouldn't be happening. We wouldn't be talking about it at all. But it's a toy gun, so this cop's probably going to get disciplined. But we'll see. We'll keep you posted on that, absolutely. Parents of Michigan school shooter Ethan Crumbly both sentenced to 10 to 15 years for involuntary manslaughter. Hang on. So the parents of the murderer have been charged with 15 years. Okay, so this opens up a wormhole because, uh, as you can see, these people are white. Okay? And their son was white, and he shot up a school or something like that. And, uh, yeah, so they think they're responsible because they could have stopped it. All right, let's dive in. We got a little little bit of things to say about this for sure. The first parents to ever be charged, then convicted in their child's mass shooting at a U.S. school, were both sentenced Tuesday to 10 to 15 years in prison after they faced the victim's families at a sentencing hearing in a Michigan courtroom. James Crumbly, 47, and his wife Jennifer, 46, were sentenced one after another by Circuit Court Judge Cheryl Matthews as they appeared together for the first time since they attended joint hearings before their landmark trials were separated last fall. Their son, Ethan, now 17, pleaded guilty as an adult to the 2021 shootings at Oxford High School in suburban Detroit and was sentenced to life in prison. Good. Matthews' sentencing decision was in line with what Oakland County prosecutors had asked for after both parents were found guilty on four counts of involuntary manslaughter, one for each of the students their son killed. Matthews told Crumbly's that the jury's convictions were not about poor parenting, but about how they repeatedly ignored warning signs that a reasonable person would have seen. These convictions confirm repeated acts that could have halted an oncoming runaway train. Uh, when you texted, Ethan, don't do it, I was texting, Madison, I love you, please call mom. Uh, Nicole Beausoleil, Beausoleil, the mother of the shooting victim, Madison Baldwin, 17, told Crumley's, When you found out about the lives your son took that day, I was still waiting for my daughter in the parking lot. The lack of compassion you've shown is outright disgusting. Uh, Jill Sove, the mother of another slain student, Jill, Justin Schilling, 17, said her parents, in action on the day of the shooting, failed their son and failed us all. The blood of our children is on your hands, too. So they're all very upset, of course. Uh, Jason, sorry, James Crumley wore an orange jumpsuit and headphones to help with his hearing, and Jennifer Crumby wore a gray and white jumpsuit. He did not look at his wife while she glanced in his direction in the photo. Uh, in Michigan, prosecutors said felonies that rise out of the same event must run concurrently, so the most Matthews could have imposed is 15 years in total. And while prosecutors wanted the parents to receive sentences that exceeded the advisory guideline range, Matthews had the ultimate direct discretion, sorry, weighing factors such as past criminal behavior and the circumstances. Uh, we were good parents. We were the average family. We weren't perfect, but we loved our son and each other tremendously. Please note that I'm truly sorry for the loss and result of what my son did. I can express how much I wish I had known what was going on uh, with him or what was going on to happen. Well, yeah, you should have. You're his parent. They both could have prevented the shooting with tragically simple actions, prosecutors wrote, adding that they failed to take any action when presented with the gravest of dangers. So there it is. Uh, what's the deal? Uh, did they know that he had guns? Did they know that he was um, planning an attack? Were they aware of this stuff and just didn't report it? So it goes down to say, like, uh, okay, so what's the deal uh, with other people? You know what I mean? What if there's a, a black mom and dad who have a child who joins a gang and they're aware of him being in a gang because he's throwing up gang signs, whatever he's at, and he has a gun in his room, and he shows his mom, I'm going out with my gun. 
So I, you know, I'm going to go rob, mob some people. So if the parents are aware of that, should they be locked up? Oh, there's nothing I could have done about it. You know what I mean? Like, he's in a gang. What if your parents, uh, dad's in a gang and you join a gang? What about all these uh, Mexicans and Latinos and all that uh, and Asian gangs that are like, you know what I mean? Familial, like they join. I follow my father's footsteps. Okay, so here it is. Day after Thanksgiving, prosecutors said James Crumley bought their son the handgun while Jennifer Crumley took him out to a gun range that weekend. On Tuesday, a teacher said she had found a note in Ethan's desk with a drawing of a gun and a person who had been shot. Long messages including the thoughts won't stop. Help me. Okay, yeah. Well, they should have reported him. No matter how much you love your son, he's obviously sick in the head and, he, and maybe he's going to shoot you. Maybe that was a picture of you. Report him. If the parents had informed them that their son had access to a gun, they would have been more authoritative to ensure immediate safety. Discovery prompted that school summon the parents for a meeting, but school officials testified that they declined to bring him in because they had to go back to work. Ethan would go on to commit the school shooting later that afternoon. All right, yeah, so yeah, there, there, there it is. It's the timeline. Um, yeah, I mean, so the question is, is like, yeah, okay, it was used in a mass shooting, it's going to be used in other crimes. Not necessarily black, Latino, uh, Asian, whatever race, it doesn't matter. All types of people are involved in gangs and poor parenting and the ability to, to stop uh, something like this from happening. So I'd like to see uh, some other prosecutions against other people uh, based off of this. Absolutely. Military doctor, transgender surgery uptick paid for with U.S. tax dollars. Huh? So uh, we've covered this before many times. I believe in 2021, in a five-year period, they spent about $15 million affirming gender uh, care and reassignment. Did you know the U.S. military is enthusiastically and frequently performing gender reassignment surgery on active duty service members using your tax dollars? I received a tip from a doctor at a military hospital and investigated the policy. I was stunned by what I found. The doctor who contacted me wishes to remain nameless for fear of retribution, but said these surgeries are happening weekly and perhaps multiple times a week. The details of the policy aren't new, but there has been a notable uptick in the number of procedures being performed, likely because of the requirement for at least 12 months of hormone therapy in most cases. These are active duty service members, although the VA is currently looking to covering these surgeries for veterans as well. As it stands, they aren't happening. There is a lot to unpack here, but I would like to take you through the most recent guidance on healthcare for active duty military with gender dysphoria. What you read below, what you read below, will detail everything, and I suggest you take the time, however, miss. However, understand this. With increasing frequency, the U.S. military is performing gender reassignment surgery, up to and including the removal of genitals and the creation of fake ones on active duty military, and you are paying for it. Not only that, but they are also covering what would be considered elective cosmetic procedures for all active duty with gender dysphoria, whose doctors say they are medically necessary. Further, I was told by my source that most of the transitions they have seen are female to male, the military requires in most cases that you change your gender in their records to match whatever the gender you transition to is. The individuals are then held to the readiness standards of their new gender. So if a large majority of females enlisted are having this surgery, what are the chances they will be able to keep up to male readiness standards when the time comes, years from now, after they've been cleared back, likely slim? The, this almost seems like a business to me, the language designed to stress keeping procedures in-house, the loose way they approve them, the streamlined process for waivers, something any current active duty will tell you isn't always the easiest. It seems like the U.S. military and DOD are making money off of mental illness. It also seems that many folks who couldn't afford this care on their own would enlist to get it. We covered uh, the Span Spanish. Uh, they came out with their new policy, and the day of 40 male... Uh, born individuals transitioned into female and some of them actually came out and said hey i did it because we get better pay women get better pay in the military because they were so oppressed before we have to make it fair and equal now by making it unequal for everybody there'll be more to come in the days and weeks ahead the military would like to perform these surgeries in a military health care facility in circumstances where the service member is stationed somewhere that doesn't have the capability they have an entire process to grant waivers for surgery and treatment. Of course, the surgery must be medically necessary, defined as healthcare services that qualified medical professionals accept to be appropriate, reasonable, and adequate. The military uses acronyms a lot. SCHP, Supplemental Healthcare Program, TGDM, ADSM, Transgender Active Duty Service Member, DHA, Defense Health Agency, and the MTF, Military Medical Treatment Facility. So without further delay, let's take a gander through the policy and how they use exclusions to get procedures covered and what the process is. The director has a lot of responsibility in this area. They want to standardize the medical 
medically necessary health care for trans ADSM active duty service member. Um, they also want to streamline the process for granting waivers so ADSM can get surgery treatment elsewhere if they can't do it at the military facility. SHCP, Supplemental Health Care Program. Uh, here's how a typical pathway works for ADSM experiencing GD, gender dysphoria. They get a diagnosis on site or at a PCP, then they try to find a treatment doctor in market inside the military somewhere. Those new people review and evaluate the ADSM. It then goes to the TGHC who validates the diagnosis. Can anyone explain to me a world in which this diagnosis would not be validated? I can't imagine one. I've heard from some sources I spoke to uh, for the story that even mentioning non-affirmation will get you sacked in more ways than one. Primary care, BH, dermatology, endocrinology, gynecology, general and plastic surgery, urology, oral, maxillofacial surgery, otolaryngology, speech pathology, gender affirming voice training, case management, and other specialties. They've started a whole care division for this, even voice training. Imagine how wonderful it must be to have all that covered for you for free. I highlighted one of the keys here that allows this treatment to be fully funded, validating med medical necessity. Does point one mean that they consider GT a mental disorder? Because I was under the impression that WE were the crazy ones for saying that. Again, note the words medical necessity. Before they remove your ability to conceive a child, they want to make sure you have met the real life experience metric for surgeries. Here they specify that these procedures can be performed at a military treatment center where my source came from or with a waiver for a treatment done outside. Here is the pre-surgical checklist for lack of a better word. Focus on number two. They are making it much easier to obtain. Worst case, ask for a waiver. It'll be granted and the procedure will take place off-site. I have so many more questions. To get around tri care and coverage issues, we will say all procedures are medically necessary so they can return to full duty. Non-binary and gender diverse people need extra care, it seems, because people don't really know what to do to treat them. A very gray area. Wait, here are some ideas. I feel like they never tell the 13 to 14 year olds this. Always affirm, very important, offer surgery even if they haven't taken the typically required course of hormones and make sure to try to warn them that they may be causing themselves fertility issues. As the ADSM gets ready for their surgery, the timing, it all needs to be approved and they need to change their gender to the new gender in D-E-E-R-S. This also requires for them to meet the same standards for fitness as the gender they became. I am told a lot of these procedures are FM. It would be interesting to see uh, the rate of retention is afterwards. Yeah, so it just goes on and on and on. So what do they cover? Um, here's the list of medically necessary procedures for GD, gender dysphoria, and the requirements. Hysterectomy and saplingo oophorectomy, removal of the uterus and ovaries, uh, total abdominal hysterectomy, corpus and cervix, with or without removal of tubes, with or without removal of ovaries, Vaginal hysterectomy for uterus, 250 grams or less with removal of tubes and or ovaries. Vaginal hysterectomy with total or partial vaginectomy. Laparoscopy uh, surgery with the vaginal hysterectomy for uterus, 250 grams or less with the removal of tubes and or ovaries. Uh, laparoscopy, whatever. Surgical with total hysterectomy for uterus, blah, 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 blah. And you're paying for it. So they're, they're lopping and chopping up in the military. Heads up. Florida pre-med student stabs mother more than 70 times, killing her during visit, authorities say. So here's the worst son ever. Uh, he really loved her, but she irritated him and made up his mind that would murder her, and that's exactly what he did. So there's Ju uh, Judd Grady. After Emmanuel Espinosa, 21, killed his mother on Saturday, he perpetually told detectives that he loved her and that he had a good relationship, but that he wanted to kill her for years because she irritated him. That's pretty much all you need to hear. The kid's mentally ill, obviously. Uh, the mother ran from him, but he stabbed her until she fell down and died. His beautiful mother was so excited to see her son. Opened the door. The second she opened the door, he charged in and started stabbing her. Judd said Emmanuel confessed to the stabbing his mother repeatedly, and even when he noticed her hands were still moving, he told detectives that he knew where to stab her for maximum effect because of his biology classes. I killed someone. I stabbed my mom. That's what he said when he called. We talked to him and he confessed. You know, I wanted to kill my mother for many, many years because she got on my nerves. Yeah, lock the stuff. Lock him up. Lock him up. Forever. Or worse. All right, guys. Uh, 10,000 subs or likes. The mask comes off. We'll reveal the handsomeness behind this uh, monster. Or maybe it's a monster behind the mask. Who knows? Sigma Tiger, signing out.